This is very important. I want to touch on this uh, in the last five minutes left and then wrap up with the other piece. Data is a very important guide from Napoleon, who says war is 90% information, to Atul Bhutte, who's a biotech researcher, who says hiding with these mounds of data is the knowledge that could change the life of a patient or change the world, to Andrew Hogue of Foursquare, who says for every two degrees the temperature goes up, check-ins at ice cream shores, shops go up 2%. Data is incredibly powerful, and the amazing thing is we have access to all of it today, right? This is part of the data. I want you to think about four key forces as you think about your businesses, right? One are what's going on as far as society, technology, culture, socioeconomic, right? Before you, as you get into that, think about it in that context. Think about the segments that you're planning to go after, what their needs and demands are, right? This is MBA in five minutes. Uh, macroeconomic forces, right? Global markets, capital markets, what's going on? Is it the right time to get capital? The commodities that you need to make your business, right? Industry forces, your suppliers, your competitors, new entrants. Signia Ventures, Sonny Dillon. Uh, I know these guys like them a lot. Um, look at the way that he capsulates the, I, well, I took what he said in Forbes on September 14, 2015, and I'm like, he basically, in one paragraph, captured the four forces as far as the virtual reality marketing is concerned. Read what he says here. I'm really excited about the potential of the virtual reality, of, for virtual reality in the near intermediate future. And while we've only made one investment in VR to date, we plan to do more. It is the next major computing platform changing the way we interact with one another and the world around us. What is that saying? Society, culture, socioeconomic, he's making a statement, right? He's got, he's got a view on what's going to happen. It's still very early days. He's recognizing that, hey, I can see the future, but it's still early. It may be 1995 in music or whatever the analogy is, right? Before enough VR headsets are out there. However, before mass penetration occurs, that's market trends, market segments, right? He's identifying the niche market where it could happen. Before mass penetration of true interactive VR takes root, mobile first VR will provide a more near term solution, right? And then he goes into industry forces, who are the new entrants and suppliers. And if you read this, he's talking about Felix and Paul, John, Next VR, um, and Oculus Rift, S Sony Morpheus, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he's calling out all the players. He's done that in one paragraph, right? And then he's also going back to market trends and saying, you know, if I'm going after this, I'm going after this market segment of the early VR gaming adopters. It's great, right? So you can go through this exercise. If you can say it in one paragraph like he did, you're being crisp and you're having some clarity about what you're projecting, right, for your vision in the future. So I wanted to provide that example. Steve Jobs did this intuitively, I think. I wasn't there when he did it. Right? But he used data as a source for imagination. He knew who his people were. Watch the campaign he did when he took over Apple called Think Different. Have you guys seen it? OK. He says, I'm making this for the rebels. I'm making this for uh, the people that don't fit in, the oddballs. He understands his audience, probably because he is one of them. Right? And then he is keeping an eye and pulse on it, and he says, this mobile phone sucks. I hate tons of mobile phones, right, that are not consolidated. Oh, and by the way, my friends who use mobile phones also are heavy email users. They are big music listeners, right? And he's intuitively making these correlations, right? And he brilliantly imagines visions and pieces it together, together with his team, brilliant team, of course, to create an iPhone. Right? Started with the iPod, it start, went with the iPhone. But it's a clear understanding, right? Now my company, and this is not a plug, but I'll tell you, what if I could, so Steve, Steve Jobs is a Picasso, right? Picassos are born how often? Picassos are not born there. Everybody's studying Steve Jobs. But Steve Jobs is a Picasso, right? Picassos are born like once a generation. But the data and intelligence 
you can predict to make correlations, right? Has the power to accelerate insights. So you can have 30,000 attributes in third party data in a marketplace, and what if I told you the correlations that he made? I can predict. I can predict it, and I can give you a guide. So you weren't born with the DNA of a Steve Jobs, and you can watch all these movies to try to be like him, but you know what? You use the power of what's available to replicate and accelerate. And uh, the, you know, that's one of the things that I'm doing at my company, is using data to shape product and marketing, right? And it's not simple data. It's what they're calling big data, right? Which is like a marketing term. I've been dealing in data like all my life, in my career, and they put the word big in front of it. Maybe because everything in America is big. I don't know. It's just data, right? But it is lots of data, and you can use it to inform uh, and I will boldly say the intelligence of Steve Jobs, right? There's evolution of things. I mean, if you watch basketball, we went from an Elgin Baylor to a Julius Irving to a Michael Jordan. Wow, right? Each, and then Kobe Bryant, who I feel, you know, copycatted Michael Jordan a lot, right? But, he, you know, he wasn't as transformative, but they learned from each other and they accelerated those learnings, right? And so the analogy here is you can do that with data, right? And concretely, what that means, right, is that there's pre-revenue and post-revenue. So what I was talking about is, hey, I'll give you intelligence to tell you what new products to test with the consumer because I have data. It's not just an imagination exercise and an incubation and a hackathon right away, right? I'm introducing that, right, and some of the stuff that I'm doing with my company, right? Um, but then you go into what you're hearing in Silicon Valley, right? Prototyping, product prototyping, growth hacking. You're continually testing and iterating very, very fast, right? And post revenue, and this is what uh, we're doing at Chia Ventures too, is we're using the data to increase the value of the customer, right? And so data is surrounding you all the way, right? Uh, from, from concept to completion to acceleration, right? And let me do a few quick definitions. Prototyping is a partially mocked up intended product or service which you're testing very quickly, so you're not building it before they come, you're just iterating very fast. Eric Rees has talked about the lean startup. There's a gentleman, I forget his name right now, who's written stuff on prototyping. Product pro, what's that? Okay, there, he did, okay, excellent, okay. And so I like what he says. And then product prototyping, iterating quickly, and then growth hacking, you've all heard about, right? It's like testing with data to find product market fit, and also the channels that work. I would encourage you when you have time to do an exercise on your own where you pick the area that you're moving into and try to be Sonny Dillon. What Sonny Dillon did to virtual reality, do to your area. Test yourself, right? Test yourself for that clarity. Two things that are very important, creativity. I'm going to recommend three books, one of a person who I respect and I think he was a pioneer, right, um, in this space is David Kelly. Um, he wrote a book called Creative Confidence. Every human being is creative. It's just about freeing your mind and being open to all the possibilities. There's Think Fast and Slow. There's The Art of Possibility. A ton of creativity books, but primarily it's a mindset. Execution, do, 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 learn, learn, learn. Don't sit in your cubicle, just keep doing and doing. My only advice for execution is find mentors who've really done it before because the learning will be tremendous as you go through your own thing because they've actually done it. But in the end, you can only execute by doing yourself. And so you have to be in the doing. Don't over-intellectualize stuff, just do it, okay? A final word as you move in to change the world. How many of you are, after this program, you know, at Draper University, going out there with an intent to change the world? That's like three, what happened to everybody else? Are we uh, falling off? Okay. Good, okay, so let me, let, me give you, let me leave you with one thing. And this is by uh, uh, a spirit that walked in flesh and blood, right? who says, it is better to travel well than to arrive. It's better to travel well than arrive, okay? Thank you, bon voyage, 
change the world, have a great journey, and um, I thank you for your time, listening, patience, engagement, interacting, good luck.